Hi, this is Stefan from the More 3D Tech team. In this tutorial we will look at how to enable Creo to work in 3D Stereo using More Stereo 3D. First of all, we need to make sure that Creo is using the OpenGL rendering engine. This requires some custom tuning inside Creo itself. To do this tuning, we simply navigate to the Creo installation folder and search for the file named config.pro. The search process might take a little time, but once we got our search results, you can see the folders where the file is saved in and the folder has to be Creo 2.0 slash common files slash m number 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 slash text. Then you got the right profile. Then we begin editing it. I use Notepad++ for it as it's giving me the most versatility. And we simply add a line which says graphics OpenGL which I already did here, but please do so in your config profile and save it. Once we did this, it's time to enable Creo in the More 3D Stereo Enabler. We simply open the enabler, click Add Application we navigate to the Creo installation directory. Once we found this directory, it is getting a little complicated because Creo's folder structure is very deep. So make sure to listen good or rewind the video in case you missed uh, a subfolder. So we open Creo. 2.0, then we go to common files, then there is M number number number, we open it, and then we find the x86 underscore win64 in case uh, you're using the 64 bit version of Creo. And here in this folder, we go to the obj folder, and inside here, we find the xtop.exe. Here it is, xtop.exe. Click open. We set the application version to Win64 as I'm using the 64-bit version of Creo. It's going to be Win64. In case you are using a 32-bit version of Creo, simply hit Win32 and set the graphics library to OpenGL. Click the enable checkbox and hit save and close. That's basically it for the enabling process. Next, make sure you have an output device selected, matching your um, output device, your 3D device. In my case, I'm going to use Anaglyph because it's um, most easy to use when uh, transferring video over the internet. So. Now that the output device is properly configured, we can go for the start of Creo. It can take a little time depending on your machine. There we are. And inside Creo we simply open a model. I'll use the model I have used last time. And here we got our model. You see I can spin it, but there is no, no 3D effect yet visible, so I'm pressing the num star key while I'm rotating the model and the in-app control panel becomes visible. First of all, inside the panel I'm setting the max 3D depth value and you can see we are getting there. There is a basic 3D effect created but this is a very parallel 3D effect 
there's no no real nice effect inside that yet so I'm going to use the Z front value to create a zero plane and make sure to be rotating the model while you are working on the in-app control panel's values. It's uh, for technical reasons needed. So now with the, the value 0 0.5, this is basically looking good, but it's not not enough for me. So I'm beginning to raise the max 3D depth effect again. And yeah, this should be a really nice 3D effect. So, that's basically it for Creo. You might want to watch the more detailed uh, tutorial which uh, talks in detail about how to create a very good 3D effect. But if you follow uh, this tutorial, you will be able to uh, create a, quite a good 3D effect inside Creo itself. So, thanks for watching and be sure to check back to the more 3D YouTube channel soon for new and updated uh, tutorial videos.